First Peter chapter 4. <clears throat> Did not get together with Pierce about songs to pick out as far as comparing to what I was going to preach about. He picks those out uh, as he prays for, for what to pre- sing. And then, uh, but what I'm going to talk about definitely will, uh, you'll see that in the song. You'll remember, if you remember the songs we sang, you'll remember uh, what God was talking about in those songs. First Peter chapter 4, we're going to read verses 1 and 2 and then 12 through 19. So let's all stand. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. He no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. Beloved, think, verse 12, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. Let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. If it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let him that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator." Let's pray. Father, thank you again for the Bible and for this truth we're going to talk about this morning. Please give us what we need from it. Help us open our hearts. And I pray, Lord, you'd help the kids downstairs open hearts to the preachers. He preaches to them. And if there's anybody in our building that does not know your son as their Savior, help them to uh, be focused on receiving him today so they can have eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. It's the greatest thing you'll ever see in your life as a Christian is when you see somebody else uh, receive Jesus as their Savior. And uh, uh, yesterday, my wife and I were out visiting some of the bus kids that ride our bus, and we got to meet this uh, family who just came, started coming last Sunday. And I got to talk to the mom, and uh, she uh, was, I, I got to share the plan of salvation with her on her front porch. I've never seen anybody in all the years I've been doing this, uh, and I've been doing it for 38 years, I've never seen anybody listen more intently than she did. Now, I've seen people just as intent, but never anybody more intent. She was so focused on what I was showing her, so intently listening to what I said. And, uh, and there was a lot of interruptions, a lot of, a lot of distractions, trying to, get, uh, trying to get them to, uh, trying to get her not to listen. And, you know, God, Satan uses anything he can to distract people from that. But anyway, she bowed her head and accepted Jesus as her Savior. And I'm telling you, uh, there's nothing like that. There's nothing like that. Seeing that happen, there's nothing like that feeling that you get when you see that happen. And it, it, that song is such a blessing, so true. Um, anyway, let's go to First Peter chapter four, and I want to talk about suffering as a Christian. Suffering as a Christian. Hopefully, you'll be able to say after this after this message is over that that uh, if you are going through suffering or when you do go through suffering, you'll be able to say like that song, "It is well with my soul." Let's go ahead and pray. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be in church today and help us to focus in on your word and what it says about this important topic. In Jesus' name, amen. Peter tells us that as, a, as, a, as Christ suffered in the flesh, even we must be prepared to do the same. He is telling us to get ready because suffering is coming. Peter says in verse 2, there is always a purpose for the suffering. <clears throat> Everything we go through, uh, there's a reason for it. So if you're suffering today, you know there you can know for sure there is a reason for it. Uh, if you've been going through hard times, if you think about the hard times in the past, and maybe you've already learned this, that there was a reason for the hard times. Maybe things have been happening to you that you don't understand. Things have been happening to you that are hard to take. Maybe right now you're at the end of your rope and you're wondering why it has to be like this. As I was studying the Bible, I learned several things about suffering that I would like to share with you this morning, and the Bible says a whole lot about it. I won't be able to. I won't be able to exhaust it all, but it says a whole lot about suffering because suffering is just something that we go through as a human being on this earth. And I, I believe I can help you with that suffering if you'll let me, as I use the Word of God to try to be a blessing. You see, all of us here today are going to experience some suffering in our lifetime. When the time comes for us to go through this, it would be wise to know of the things that God has to say regarding suffering in our life. 
if you don't listen, you may not make it when suffering comes your way. And it's terrible when a hard time destroys a person. It's a really sad thing. Many Christians crumble when they have to go through suffering, and the reason they do is because they do not find out what God's Word has to say about that uh, and say about what they are going through. It's easy to quote Romans 8.28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose, and then say, well, this is for a reason. But can I tell you, God wants us to know why we're suffering. He wants us to know that. He wants every experience of our lives to be a learning experience, an experience whereby we can be more like his son, which is, by the way, the purpose for all of our lives is to be like him. Peter tells us in our text verse that suffering is nothing to be ashamed of, but rather an experience that can benefit, we can benefit from. So what I'm going to talk about is for everyone in this room, those who have suffered, those who are suffering, and those who will suffer. And I really believe if you listen this morning, you'll leave here today with a better understanding of why you are going through suffering, and in turn, you'll be able to go through it with a better attitude and determination to keep pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God for your life. I want you to take your Bible and go to Philippians chapter 3 and verses 13 and 14, and uh, we're going to use our Bible a lot this morning, so um, be ready to do that. Philippians chapter 3. Verses, I got so many verses to use, uh, I won't be able to get to all of them, I'm sure. But Philippians chapter 3. Now, so when you're going through a hard time, and God wrote these two verses in the Bible uh, for a lot of reasons, but one of them is for when you're going through a hard time. It's, he says here, brethren, I count not myself to have, have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth than those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And so, if you'll listen this morning, I do believe that you'll be able to do that. You'll be able to press toward the mark, keep going toward the goal, which is to be like him, uh, even through the times of suffering. So listen carefully as I talk about this. Now, what is suffering? Well, I just wrote this down and, and as a definition. It's not maybe not the best definition over here of suffering, but it works. Suffering is when things don't go the way you plan them to go. Uh, suffering is when things don't happen the way you plan them to happen. Right? That's what suffering is. Now, when you go through suffering, there's three types of suffering we can experience. There's suffering of the body, uh, mental suffering uh, in our, our minds, or spiritual suffering. Now, suffering in the body, bodily suffering, would involve health, sickness, uh, severe pain, maybe, that you go through. Uh, suffering mentally may be uh, going through some kind of pressure, maybe being discouraged, maybe some misunderstanding has happened in your life. Maybe some, maybe there's somebody gossiping about you. Maybe disappointments. Maybe some financial problems. Maybe some tragedies that you experience in your life. Uh, also, there's suffering in our spirit. Spiritual suffering. There's attacks on our spirit by Satan. Here you're trying to grow as a Christian and you're being attacked one way or another. Maybe you've given into some sin and you're living with some guilt that you that you've uh, that that because of that sin maybe you're going through a time where you're praying and no prayers are answered and these are things you really want God to do and he's not doing it uh, maybe there's some reproach uh some reproach you're going through some persecutions that you're going through let me read to you uh 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 10 where the bible says here for therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God. People criticizing you or, or reproaching you or persecuting you because of your stand for God. So there's bodily suffering, mental suffering, spiritual suffering. Now, we need to understand this, that suffering, and hear this real good, is to be expected. Okay? It is to be expected. I want you to follow along with me here. Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. <clears throat> For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. All right? Now, God, it is God's will you be sanctified or set apart. What? To be like him. Be like Jesus. And if you're going to be like Jesus, suffering is going to be a part of it, a uh, part of that process. First, First Thessalonians 3, 4. For verily when we were with, with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation, even as it came to pass, and ye know. So Paul said to this church at Thessalonica, we're going to suffer. We're going to suffer, and it happened, just like he said it was going to happen. Uh, for, go to Philippians chapter 1, verse 29. Philippians chapter 1, verse 29. <clears throat> Philippians 1, 29. For unto you it is given on the behalf, in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, but also to suffer. 
for his sake. See that? I mean, you can't get away from it. Uh, yeah, it's great to believe on Jesus for salvation. That's great, fantastic. And you ought to do that if you've not, you're not saved. You ought to believe on Jesus, trust him as your savior before you leave this room. But also, it was given to me not only to, to, to be saved, but also to suffer for his sake. You see, go to First uh, Peter chapter 4, verse 12, verse we read this morning. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Don't consider it strange. It's going to happen. 2 Timothy 3.12, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You're going to suffer persecution, and that's suffering. All right? Uh, the Bible says in Psalm chapter 80 and verse 5, Psalm chapter 80 and verse number 5, it says here, um, Thou feedest them with the bread of tears. It's talking about God with his people. Thou feedest them with the bread of tears and givest them tears to drink in great measure. You see, suffering, God's going to put his people through it. You have to go through it. It's a must. It's a necessary part of the Christian life, and we're going to see that as we go along. So don't be surprised. Don't, don't react to it in the wrong way. Don't, be, don't act like you can't believe this is happening to you. Uh, it's all part of what God is either doing or planning for your life or, or allowing your life. The Bible says in Psalm 102, verse 9, the psalmist said, For I have eaten ashes like bread and mingled my drink with weeping. You see a lot of that throughout the Word of God. The Bible says Jesus suffered. We know that. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 21, it says this. It says, For herein too were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. So one of the re ways to be like Jesus is to find out how he suffered, how he went through the suffering. So when you go through the suffering, you can do the same thing he did. Uh, second, First Peter 3.18, the Bible says, uh, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. And then it says here in chapter 4, verse 1, For, for as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. You see that? Christ suffered. It was necessary. In Luke chapter 24 and verse 46, Luke 24 verse 46, it says, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. It behooved him, or that means it was necessary that he went through the suffering. Now we know he suffered mentally. He suffered mentally. One time we see in Luke chapter 22, he looked over Jerusalem and he saw people that didn't care about God. They, he was there to save them. He was there to help, to help them get to heaven, make it possible for them to go. And people rejected him left and right. People living their life, drinking God's water, uh, breathing God's air, enjoying God's sunshine, and living their life as if God didn't even exist. And yet we know that God so loved the world. God's love for people is so deep and so strong, and yet they live their life as if he's not even around. They ignore him. They reject him. That's suffering mentally. You see, that's, that's putting him through some amazing suffering. And God, Jesus has experienced that. Uh, he, was, he experienced that when he was here on earth. He saw people uh, turn from him. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, 3, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Verses 9 and 10 of the same chapter. He made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he hath done no violence, neither was there any, was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him, he hath put him to grief. And thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin." He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. We see throughout the Bible, as the Lord, as the Lord deals with his people, that how, how he suffered mentally. But also he suffered physically. In Isaiah chapter 50, verse 6, it says about Jesus, I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. Isaiah 53, 5. Jesus said this about Jesus. It says, be, be, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. So we see that he suffered physically when he was here, here but also he suffered spiritually. The Bible says, he that knew no sin became sin for us. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, 6, 
All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Can you imagine the perfect son of God having all the sins of everybody who ever lived or ever will live laid on him? And he that knew no sin became sin for us. So bad was it that the Bible says in Mark that the Lord, the Father turned his back on his own son and caused Jesus to cry out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He suffered spiritually, you see. <clears throat> now, uh, so Jesus went through this, and the Bible tells us that we are to be conformed to his image, and one of the ways it lets us know that is that we are going to suffer for, we're going to suffer like he suffered. We see in the Bible others suffered for him. The apostles were beaten for preaching the word of God. In fact, they said in Acts 5.41, they suffered shame for his name. The Bible says Moses suffered. Hebrews 11.25, he said he would rather suffer affliction with the people of God. The prophets suffered for standing against wrong. James chapter 5, verse 10. Many of the prophets were persecuted and even killed for, for standing for right, for preaching the word of God to a bunch of people that didn't want to hear it. Paul suffered as a Christian. In fact, Jesus uh, was, was told, or rather told, the man that was dealing with Saul when he first got saved, uh, Acts chapter 9, verse 16, the Lord told this man named Ananias who was going to talk to Saul or Paul. He said, for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Paul suffered as a Christian. We see that in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 30. The Bible says he suffered the loss of all things in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 8. You see, so others suffered for the Lord. We see that in the Bible. So you're not alone. In fact, there's a verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 that we need to pay attention to and believe and accept as true. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted or tested, above that ye are able. You see, so it's common. These kind of things that we go through, whether it's spiritual, mental, physical suffering, these are all common to man. They just happen. Now, <clears throat> so then the question comes, how does it come into our life? How does it come into our life? Well, sometimes it's through our own mistakes and our own sin. Galatians 6, 7 says, Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If I murder somebody, i got to pay for it. If I steal something, I have to pay for it. If I lie, i got to suffer the consequences of the lie. If I get involved in alcohol, i got to suffer the consequences of living that kind of a lifestyle. You see, i got to suffer the consequences, whether they're physical, mental, or spiritual, and sometimes they're all three. God allows the consequences to teach us a lesson. But sometimes it comes through our own mistakes and our own sin. Sometimes it comes as a result of the mistakes and sins of others. They bring it into our lives. When you, when you love someone, and they get away from God. You suffer. They're going to suffer too. But you suffer also because you love that person. And there's a lot of mental suffering that goes through, uh, goes in up to a person's life when someone they love gets away from God. If you have a daughter or a son go bad, there's a lot of suffering involved in that. So sometimes the mistakes and sins of others bring the suffering. Sometimes it's through tests. God said it's time to test you. I want to test you. <clears throat> and through those tests comes some, come, some, uh, come some kind of suffering, physical, mental, or spiritual. Through God working in our lives, we see, for instance, Paul. God was working in Paul's life and, and told Paul to go preach the gospel. So Paul went and preached the gospel to every city he went to, and he always wound up in jail because of it. John the Baptist told the truth to King Herod about his relationship, his a wicked relationship with his brother's wife. And John the Baptist wound up in jail, you see. And we see that Jesus never delivered John. He allowed him to suffer. There is a reason for it, a purpose for it. Sometimes it comes through Satan. Job, for instance, in the book of Job, went through a lot of suffering that Satan actually did to him with God's approval of it. But Satan did the work. We see in Mark chapter 5, a man who was possessed by a demon and all the torture, all the physical suffering that this demon put this man through. We see in Luke 13, 16 and Acts 10, 38, same type of thing. You see, so sometimes Satan brings it on us. But see, here's the thing. 
If Christ is not above it, neither are we. You see, if he went through it, then what's wrong with us going through it? You see, now, why does God allow it? Well, again, sometimes he allows it because we did wrong. And God said, okay, you did wrong. You got you to pay for it. You got to suffer the consequences. It just has to happen. I uh, think of uh, Miriam when she, when she rebelled against her, her, her brother, the leader of Israel. She rebelled against it. And so Miriam got leprosy. All right. So uh, Miriam had to suffer. We see that David suffered when he committed adultery with Bathsheba. Because of his sin, he lost his son. Uh, he lost his little baby. And also he lost, some, he lost control of his family because of it. You see? And it was, all, it was agony to him. I, I'll never forget that story where his son Absalom, who rebelled against David, uh, be, I think he rebelled against David because he saw and, and learned about some of the things his dad did and rebelled against his, his dad. But anyway, when his, dad, when his son died, <clears throat> when he was killed, David cried out, My son, my son, oh Absalom, my son, would God, I had died for thee. You can just hear the agony. Sense the agony. In David's voice, he suffered. The Israelites, when they, because of their sin and rebellion towards God, wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. See? <clears throat> Sometimes it's our fault. I mean, if we didn't do a certain thing, then we wouldn't be suffering. We wouldn't be suffering. Sometimes we suffer to reveal the work, the work of God in our life. Go to John chapter 9. And verse 2, this is the story about a man who was, who was blind. John chapter 9 and verse 2. John chapter 9 and verse 2, the Bible talks about this, this man. And the, the question is asked about him. It says, uh, and his disciples asked him, say, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Now, I'd have to say, if you're, if you're blind, you're suffering. No doubt about it. Jesus answered, neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Now we know what happened. Jesus opened up the eyes of this blind person. So sometimes we are allowed to suffer uh, to, uh, to reveal the work of God as he delivers us. Sometimes we are, we are uh, allowed to suffer because it draws us closer to him. Because he went through the same thing. Maybe he went through the same type of mental suffering you're going through. Or the same type of physical suffering. Or the same type of spiritual suffering. I'll tell you, when I'm going through a hard time, I want to talk to somebody who's been through what, I, what I'm going through. Someone who understands. And Jesus has been, in all, through all, uh, been tempted in all points like as we are. And so we can go to him about any kind of suffering we're in. And he understands. And it draws us closer to him. You see, sometimes the suffering is for God's glory. <clears throat> when the, when the uh, Mary and Martha lost their brother, Lazarus, he died. Uh, why did, why did he, and they even said to him, you know, if you, if you wanted to, Jesus, you could have made it so he did, my brother had not died. But they went through this terrible suffering, this mourning of the loss of their brother. And why? So God would get the glory. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, and a lot of people believed on him because of that. You see, sometimes we suffer just because we're doing well. Go to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 20. 1 Peter 2, 20. For what glory is it if when you, bu are, when you be buffeted for your faults, you shall take it patiently? But when, if you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently. This is acceptable with God. And then 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 17. The Bible says, For it is better if the will of God be so that you suffer for well-doing than for evil doing. Sometimes you suffer just because you're doing right, for well doing, for doing righteousness. God allows it. See, all throughout the Bible, again, we see God's men, God's women suffering. Hebrews chapter 11 will tell you a bunch of people who were doing right, they stood for God and they went through all kinds of suffering. Why? Well, one of the reasons is to bring glory to God. A lot of people have been saved through the sufferings of Christians as they stood their ground and did not budge when other people caused them to suffer because they were doing right. But also, God allows it to show, to show us ourselves. Are we really serious about the Christian life? Are we really at the level of Christianity we think we're at? 
Are we really going to keep going? Oh, I'll live for God no matter what. That's easy to say that when everything's going well. But go through some suffering because you are doing right and see if you still stand for right. How many people back off because they stand for something and the family criticizes them? The family doesn't want anything to do with them anymore. And they say, the, 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 fam, the person backs off and says, well, I guess I'm, I am being too fanatical. I'll tell you what, I, I don't know how you are, but when I committed to the Bible, I decided to do what the Bible says. And a lot of what the Bible says, uh, it tells me to do, is totally opposite of what my family does. And a lot of what the Bible tells me not to do is exactly what my family's doing. And so I can't partake in what they're doing just because it's my brother or my sister or my mom or my dad or my cousin. I can't partake in what they're doing just because they're family. No, he's my father. I owe more to him than anybody else in the universe. My life's committed to him, not them. And when I have that attitude, if, you, should, if you should take that attitude, you should take that strong stand but never with a cocky, you think you're better than they are type of attitude. It's wrong to have that type of attitude. If they criticize you for that, I don't mind being criticized for my position. I do mind being criticized for my disposition. If I'm getting criticized for my disposition, that means I'm coming across with a cocky attitude. I think I'm better than they are, which I'm not. I don't think I'm better than they are. I think God's way of living is better than their way of living. And I decide to go that way because I want a better life. But they don't agree with it. And so there's going to be suffering, and God allows that. I remember, I, I've told you this before, but when I first got saved, and I started going to, to, to a Baptist church, I was going to Catholic, and I said, no, I got saved, started going to a, a Baptist church that was preaching the Bible to me, and my, my favorite uncle, my favorite uncle, and he's still my favorite uncle today, wrote me a letter, and he really ripped my face off. He blasted me. Now, this, this is a man who I, I could not wait to be around this guy. I mean, he was, we were so close. But when I became a Christian, and I, I, didn't, I didn't call him up on the phone and say, hey, I'm leaving the Catholic church. I didn't say that at all. I just started going to a Baptist church. And boy, he wrote me a letter that was so mean. I couldn't believe it. It's the kind of letter you read and you start shaking. You can't believe, first of all, you can't believe what they're saying. And second of all, you can't believe who's saying it to you. It really, really, and God, why did God allow that in my life? He wanted, he was trying to show me <laughs> if I would keep standing for God, no matter what. Am I standing for God because it's right? Or am I standing for God because it's convenient? Which one is it? See, like I said, it's real easy to stand for God when everybody you're around agrees with you. But when people don't agree with your stand, then it gets a little harder, you see. And I'll tell you what, you'd, be, you'd do well just to take, take your stand. And st- I, I, don't want, I don't want to be budged by anybody. I, I'm st- I believe with all my heart I'm standing exactly where right is. And I don't want to wind up standing on the wrong side of things because somebody influenced me to do it with some pressure. But it, that's going to come. You're going to suffer for righteousness' sake, for sure. But God allows it to see if you'll keep going. Also, sometimes we suffer because of the Lord's child rearing. Go to Hebrews chapter 12. I'll show you what I mean. Because of the way Lord, the Lord rears his children. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5. <clears throat> the Bible says, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5, And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth, that means to whip, every son whom he receiveth. If you endure chastening, God deal with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? The Bible also goes on and says, But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had um, fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chasten us after their pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So sometimes we go through suffering because of the Lord's child rearing. See, God says this in the Bible. He cannot let us have our own way and get away with it. I, my kids didn't, okay, 
we raised them up and we said, these are the rules. These are the rules you go by. You live in this house, this is what you follow. We told them, if you disobey the rules, here are the consequences. There was, if I was going to be, and my wife was going to be the man and woman we claim to be, people of our word, we taught our kids not to lie. If mom and dad were not going to be liars, we had to do exactly what we said we were going to do. We laid down the rules of the house. We said, here are the consequences. If we let them get away with breaking the rule of the house without suffering the consequences, then we lied to them. We said the, these are the consequences, but they really aren't. So that was a lie. And we didn't want to be known as a liar to our kids. We didn't want, didn't want to lie before God. So, therefore, we care. If you disobey, you disobey the rules, you got to suffer the consequences. And God's the same way. He says, here's the rules I have for how I want you to follow, to live on the earth. This is what I want you to do. By the way, if we do it, he puts these out because he loves us and he knows if you follow them, you'll have a great life. But he says, if you disobey him, I'm your father. And you're going to suffer the consequences. That's why he put Hebrews 12 in the Bible. He let us know about his chastening and his scourging of disobedient children. You see, he's teaching us to make wise choices. It's part of his plan to train us. You see, and I thank God for that. I thank God my Heavenly Father will not let me walk the wrong path. Because I know sometimes what I want to do. And what I want to do, if I follow that path, it'll ruin my life. It'll destroy me. And he loves me too much to let that happen without, without trying to stop me. So sometimes it's because of his child ring. Now, God has a plan. He has a plan. He's trying to work a plan in our life. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 4. The Bible says here, Galatians 3 verse 4. It says, have you suffered so many things in vain? If it, if it be yet in vain? <clears throat> no. He, the, the answer to that question is no. You don't go through suffering for no reason. It's not just, well, it's time for you to go through some pain. What's it going to accomplish? Nothing. I just want you to go through some pain. That's not the way God is. There's a reason for it. It's not in vain. You see, there's a plan. Romans 8, 28, 29. All things do work together for good to them of God, to them who are called according to his purpose, so you can be conformed to the image of his son. Uh, There's a purpose behind it. It proves our sonship. Again, if we didn't go through suffering, it would be proof that we weren't really his. The Bible says it shows that we are living right. 2 Timothy 3.12, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. It's proof that he loves us. Because what the suffering is going to accomplish something is going to make us better. The suffering is going to profit us or benefit us. It's going to clean us, clean up our life, make us more like him. It's, it's given to test us to see how strong we are. It's given uh, to us to yield fruit in our life, produce positive things in our life. To produce holiness, the Bible says in Hebrews 12.10. To draw us to him. To be able to be of a help to others. We can do that. We can help other people because of what we suffer. I, all right, I can tell you as a pastor, you know who I've been the most effective with helping people? They come to me for help. I'm the most effective with people that I can identify with. I've been through that. You know how somebody says to you, I know how you feel. And you know they don't know how you feel because they never went through what you went through. But when somebody says, I know how you feel because this same thing, type of thing happened to me, and you, they tell you and you say, yeah, yeah, you do know how I feel. You see? <clears throat> and so God allows us to go through suffering sometimes, and one of the results of that is, now I can comfort someone with the same comfort God comforted me with. I can be a blessing and help us. And you know what? People need that. They need that. We need, we need the help of others when we're going through suffering. Now, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to face it. I read you scripture about it, uh, lots of verses. Uh, it's obvious that it's part of our life. But here's the thing. How are we going to respond to it? How are you going to respond to it? There's nothing you're going to go through. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to make it sound like it's not that hard. It, there are going to be some real hard things you're going to go through. Very hard things. All right? <clears throat> I mean, for instance, you're going to experience death in your life. I, my wife and I talk about this the older we get. Unless the rapture comes or something else weird happens, one of us is going before the other one. I'm not looking forward to that. 
I'm not, I, I think about this. I think about this. And you think about it more as you get older. One of us is going to be standing next to the other one while the other one's on their deathbed. I don't, I don't, I'm not looking forward to that moment. That's going to be tough. That's going to be tough. But you know what? I cannot make the statement, and neither can she, I won't be able to take that. I won't be able to take that because I can take it. I won't be able to take it. Paul said in Philippians 4, <clears throat> chapter 4, verse 12, he wrote this, Philippians chapter 4, verse 12. <clears throat> the Bible says here in verse 12, I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. So somehow, some way, the hardest thing I'll ever face, I'll be able to make it through. I don't know exactly how it's going to work. I don't know exactly what God's going to give me. If it's me that stays that is, is left behind here on this earth, maybe it'll be a sermon, maybe it'll be a song, maybe it'll be a, a chapter in the Bible, a verse in the Bible. Somehow, some way, God is going to get me through that. Same with my wife. Somehow, some way, God's going to get. I leave her. If I go to heaven first, I leave her in good hands. You see, if I really believe what I'm preaching, and I do. If this is all make-believe, then who knows what's going to happen. I may wind up in a mental institution. But this is true. It is real. You see? Now, <clears throat> he, he, we can say, and by the way, look at First Peter chapter 4, verse 14. Look at this. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory of God rested upon you. So God said, when you're being reproached, <clears throat> you, can, you can say, you can be happy about it. Well, how can you be happy about it? Well, I'll tell you what. When when my, my uncle wrote that note to me, that letter to me, I was, in one way, I was not happy at all. It broke my heart. But I also thought about this. I must be doing something right. I must, because I'm standing for the truth. You see? Peter said you can be happy through it. Don't be ashamed, but glorify God. He said in verse 16, don't be ashamed, but glorify God. Don't be ashamed of your suffering. Surrender your soul to him, 1 Peter 4.19. We can do react to it the right way, or we may rebel. We may get a hardness of heart. We may back off, you see. Now, we could keep going through it all, which is what we're supposed to do, and we can do that, or we're going to react in a negative way and rebel. The Bible says people uh, actually faint or, or get weak about it, too. Uh, or we could draw on his strength. We could draw on his strength. We could just sit around and just get weak and depressed and discouraged, or we could draw on the strength he offers us. We may bear it and not bear any, and not learn anything from it, which is a waste of suffering. Or we may yield to it and let God have his way. You see, God, Peter said, and, and Paul said in Romans, we can rejoice through it. We can rejoice through it. If one suffers, the Bible says we all suffer. We can help others get through it. Uh, we can pray for the suffering person while someone's going through suffering. Put yourself in their shoes. But here's what I want you to see, and I'm going to close with this. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. So suffering is going to come. It comes in our life. It comes in the lives of people we love. It's part of life. And there's a reason for it. There's a purpose for it. God is allowing it or doing it for a reason. We are not to be surprised. We are not to be shocked by it. God said, I don't want you to get upset. I don't want you to get angry about it. I want you to react to it in the right way. I want you to depend on me and trust me and call on me for help. And when others are going through that you love, I want you to be there for them. I don't want you to criticize them. I don't want you to judge them. I want you to help them get through it. And so no matter how Hard it gets if the suffering is really bad. And we're all going to go through a period of that time, either mental, physical, or spiritual. Remember this. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 4.17, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for, for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. 
You see that? God said, he compares the affliction, he calls it a light affliction. Why is he called a light affliction? He's comparing what we're going through to what we're going to be in, what we're going to see. How is how's it all going to end up? It's all going to end up. I'm going to be in this amazing place. I'm going to be when 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 when, the, when I die, when I leave this earth, I'm going to go to a place where there is no more sorrow, there is no more pain, there is no more suffering at all. I'm going to go to a place where there is no more sin, nothing bad, nothing negative. It's all going to be good. I'm going to have. I, I, I'm going to see things that are eternal. I'm going to leave things that are temporal. And one of the things that's temporal is the suffering that I'm going through. It's going to end, you see. Now, I'll tell you what, you better get a hold of that now. You better get a hold of that now. You better make up your mind that what God said here is true. Otherwise, when that suffering time comes, it's going to destroy you. And that's not supposed to happen. There are people today sitting in mental institutions, that have been destroyed by the suffering that they've gone through. There are Christians who are nothing, doing nothing for God, away from God, actually bitter at God because of the suffering that they went through. And they did not respond to it the way the Bible says to respond to it. You see? <clears throat> I mean, I, I look at someone like Peter. I look at someone like the Apostle Paul. I look at someone like Jeremiah. The things that they went through. the the martyrs in the book of Hebrews, if they can get through all that stuff, there's got to be a way to get through the suffering. Because they did it. And they have the same God I have. They have the same book I have. So I can do it too. Or I can become bitter and angry and upset and have my life go downhill. I can do that. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. I'm almost finished here. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. See that? I mean, it's all going to pass, but God also said if you suffer, you're going to reign with him. Hey, you're going to go from the depths of suffering to actually reigning with him. Wow, that's a pretty good trade. I'll take that trade. Go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 11. Matthew chapter 5, verse 11. Matthew chapter 5, verse 11. Jesus said this. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad. Watch this. For great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. That's a pretty good trade. Great is your reward in heaven. If you walk away from the suffering, if you quit because of the suffering, if you quit because of the suffering, there is no reward. There's no reigning. There's no far more exceeding eternal weight of glory for you. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 34. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 34, it says, For he had compassion on me and my bonds and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that you have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. And then Hebrews chapter 11, verse 25, the Bible says about Moses choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasure in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward or the repayment of the reward. God's going to repay you with a reward for going through the suffering, you see. So Peter said this, Wherefore, let him that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Peter said, don't be surprised when you go through things that are not expected. Rather, as you go through it, figure out what has caused it. If it is sin, get that sin right, or, or, or the suffering will grow worse. God can take the suffering as a result of sin and use it to grow us and glorify himself. On the other hand, if it is not due to sin, then be assured God is allowing this to make you or break you, to test you so you can see how much you're growing. As hard as it seems to take, remember, it is nothing compared to what the man or woman who stays faithful through it will experience when they stand before Jesus Christ. 
what I have experienced in this, the things I've suffered and the things that I will suffer, it is nothing compared to, to what I'm going to get in heaven. It is nothing. I won't even remember these days because I have so much waiting for me when I get up there. You see? So I want to stay faithful when I stand before Jesus Christ. It's hard now. <clears throat> it's hard now. But, you know, it still will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. Yes, oft times the way seems hard. But you know what Jesus said in Hebrews 13, 5? I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And I leave you with Hebrews, with Isaiah chapter 43. And I love this, Isaiah chapter 43. We see it sprinkled throughout the Old and New Testament when God talks about suffering, how he's going to help us through it. He said, but now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. What a promise. What an amazing promise. He said in 2 Timothy 2, 3, we are to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So don't run from it. Don't run from it. Let God do the work he's, he's gonna, he wants to do because it's in your life. It's coming. Suffering's coming. But let God do the work that he wants to do because it's there. Some special work that he can do in your life that he couldn't do if it wasn't there. Let him have his way. And you'll be glad you did. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for being good to us. Thank you for telling us about suffering. You didn't let it uh, take us by surprise. You told us in the Bible it's going to be there. Lord, help us to accept it and to be willing to go through it the way you tell us to go through it. Find out why it's happening and then and then go through it the way you say to go through it. And we, we you promise us that we'll come out for it the better. We'll be stronger. We'll be better Christians. Help us all to be willing to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ because he did that for us. <clears throat> Help us to learn from the suffering that we go through. So not only we can be better, more pleasing to you, but we can help others get through their suffering. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Now, of course, the main suffering that God did for us is, first of all, God the Father gave us his son. He allowed his son to come to earth for, one re for the main reason, and that was to die to pay for our sins. He knew what his son was going to go through, and he still let him come. He knew how it was going to hurt him, but he still let him come because God so loved the world, he loved you, that he gave his only begotten son. And then the Bible says Jesus came to earth, and when he walked this earth, he lived a perfect life for 33 years. After 33 years was over, he then went to the cross, and on the cross he paid, took all your sins and suffered what you would suffer if you died and went to hell yourself. He paid your penalty so you wouldn't have to go to hell and pay it yourself. He bought you the gift of eternal life so you could get into heaven for free. The Bible says you're a sinner and you deserve to go to hell to pay for your sins. God's law and justice demands a payment for your sin, and that payment is hell. But Jesus died for you and paid that price for you. And he bought you the gift of eternal life. God said the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You can't earn your way to heaven. Nothing you can do at all. I don't care if you get baptized a million times. I don't care what church you join. I don't care how good you live. You cannot earn your way into heaven. God said it is a gift that Jesus purchased for you when he died on the cross. And the Bible says if you come to him, and, and also let me just add this before I, I finish that, uh, to prove he was God after he died, they took him off the cross, they laid him in a tomb, and three days later he rose from the dead, walked out of that tomb alive, and he's in heaven today. <clears throat> and the Bible says if you will uh, turn from everything else you're trusting in and turn to Jesus and ask him to save you, come to him humbly and sorry for your sins and ask him to save you from hell and give you eternal life, the Bible says he will become your savior and your name will be in heaven forever. You'll have, you'll have a place waiting for you when you die, guaranteed by God. You can have that today if you don't have that. I'm going to say, Pastor, I remember... Uh, reading about Jesus and him suffering for me and dying for my sins. I saw that in the Bible. I realized I was a sinner and deserved to go to hell to suffer for my own sins, but I saw that he loved me and he died for me. And I called on him and asked him to be, be my Savior, and I know for sure I'm going to heaven. If that's you, you raise your hand. Let me see that. I know for sure I'm going to heaven when I die because I've asked Jesus to save me. 
you may lower your hands. By the way, that's the only way you can get to heaven. There is no other way. If you are saved, <laughs> um, that's good. Now, let me ask you this. How many would say, Pastor, um, I'm not sure. I have some doubts. I'd like to go to heaven, but I'm not sure I would. If that's you, you raise your hand. I have some doubts. I'd like to go to heaven, but I'm not 100% sure I would. But I'd like to be 100% sure if the Bible says I could be. In just a moment, we're going to have an invitation song. And when the song begins, if you're not sure you're going to heaven, all you got to do is leave your seat, walk up front here to Kevin, and tell Kevin, I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. I'd like to see from the Bible how I could be sure. He will direct you to somebody that will take the Bible and show you from God's word how heaven can be your home. If you are saved, the next thing God wants you to do is to be baptized. If you've not been baptized since you got saved, you can do that today. Come up and tell Kevin, I'd like to be baptized uh, and obey God in that area of my life. If you want to join the church, come up and tell Kevin you'd like to do that. But if you would say to God this morning, uh, Lord, I want to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, and I want to, and I want to learn from the sufferings that I go through. Uh, I want you to be able to accomplish what you want to accomplish through them. I'm surrendering to that today. You come and tell him that at this altar, right? Let's all stand. The song will begin. You'll obey the Holy Spirit and do what he says.